All right, so let's look at designing a database in AppSheet. So what are, or what is the database design in AppSheet? So this is kind of talking about the thoughtful, um, thoughtfully creating the foundation for your AppSheet app. So you're gonna establish the purpose of that application, create separate tables for each of your um, entities, and then use related relational database structure. And we'll take a look at what that looks like in a couple of our other slides. So what you're gonna to do to create this is you're gonna create a new Google Sheet, you're gonna add header columns, and we'll go into the details of what this looks like. And then you're gonna use ID or email as um, your key columns. Um, and so let's look at what our use case is so you can kind of give more context about what we're talking about. So our use case for, um, for this app build that we're gonna show you guys today, the main purpose of the app is to onboard new team members um, to the AppSheet training team. So the company is AppSheet Training and it's a team onboarding app. Um, and this business process is to digitally manage employee, the employee onboarding process for AppSheet Training. Functional requirements, we need to be able to create new team members to add to our team. And we need to be able to list resources that are helpful for each team member and then send company updates. So with all that in mind, we've got a good use case and a guide to kind of help us um, understand what, what the functionality of the app is, what the main purpose is, and how to map it all together into a structured database. So I want to show you guys this app because I, I had a lot of fun making this one. Um, so this is the um, employee onboarding app. And the thing I liked about designing this app is it has a profile page. You don't see many AppSheet apps with a profile page. And I've heard a lot of comments on YouTube and even received some emails about like, how do I design a profile page in AppSheet? So we'll take a look at how that works. Um, and then you can create this little feature right here, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that um, allows you to click into the, to the view. And this is like a, um, a detail view with quick edit columns and users can toggle on and off if they want to receive updates, change their first name or last name if it's not right, um, and then get those updates. All right. And then if we move through, we can go to our team directory. This is also another fun view. Um, I believe this is a card view. And then we have it as or grouped by developers, marketing, operations, and training. Um, and then you can click on each of the employees to see their detail views. Um, you can text employees, call employees, or uh, send them an email. Um, and this is all done within the app. And then the action button's right there. And then we can go back to the menu. Um, and Clark's gonna go into like actually designing all of this. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. And um, this is my favorite part. So these are resources. So you can actually click on each of these. And this is like, our AppSheet training website on an AppSheet app, <laughs> which is just super fun. So we have the uh, webinar for this week uh, with a little description. Um, and then you can actually click on our trainings. So if you're interested in learning more about our trainings, you can go ahead and click on that and it'll direct you to our AppSheet Essentials Bootcamp. Super awesome. So if you want to go and get signed up for our AppSheet training, um, professional subscription, this is where you can go. Um, right here on apsheetraining.com. Super quick and easy to sign up. Um, all you have to do is click this purchase now button, but it, it doesn't cost anything right now because it's free for 30 days, right? So, um, and it'll enter you into that uh, grand prize drawing of a year access of AppSheet Training Services. So make sure you get signed up. You can sign up right now and you'll be entered to win. Um, for that grand prize drawing. So if you want access to that, that is the way to do it. Um, so going back to our app, um, we have each of our trainings in here. So if employees wanted to view one of the trainings so that way they can get up to speed on AppSheet, they can look at all these courses right here. So we have courses from the essentials of um, designing an AppSheet app all the way to document generation, super fast, track um, AppSheet development in the fast lane. So this is the fastest way 
to learn AppSheet, creating an app for my DIA to employment. Um, UX design is another great one. And then we have our expressions page. So if you haven't heard about the expressions page, you can click on any of these links and find um, useful information about building expressions in AppSheet. Um, and this one is on the free plan. So if you uh, just want the free plan, you can access the expressions page. And then we also have our enterprise um, training right here that you can click on. And we now offer certifications. So make sure you get um, that professional subscription so you can get signed up and display your, um, your app sheet skills. Um, you can view it on your LinkedIn profile or any social platform, resume, wherever you wanna put your badge. Um, and so, yeah, that's the employee onboarding app. And we'll also look at what does it look like for a new user to sign up um, and kind of how that process works later on. Um, if you um, want to get access to this app, make sure you're signed up and then I'll put it in the, in the description below the, um, the links to all these resources. Um, and then you'll just click here. So that way you can copy and customize this, um, this app. All right, so that's what it looks like um, from the use case and kind of seeing what the client wants or the company wants, and then how to create an app out of the client's requests. Um, and Clark will kind of walk you through some more of those um, best practices for that. So we talked about defining um, your each entity for your database, right? So this, this data, this database or this app has uh, four tables and we've broken, in, broken them up here. And then each of these um, words right here is like a header column. And then we'll talk about creating records and why we um, designed it this way. And Clark will talk to you about best practices for each of these. And I think, yep, there's your slide, Clark. Uh, well, cool. I'm glad to be here with you guys today. So obviously, first things first, good title is everything. Um, so for this app that we built, this is somewhat of an onboarding app. Uh, so we're just going to call this team onboarding. Uh, but it can be anything you want this to be. Obviously, uh, the more specific you are with your uh, names of certain things, the better. Um, it just it will help you in the long run, just trying to figure out um, what things go where, where things should connect, et cetera. Um, so we're going to start off. Every, every table that you have is going to need a primary key. Um, if you don't know what a primary key is, essentially it is a unique, um, basically uh, ID tag. Uh, so in the United States, we have social security numbers. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's a, a unique ID. That's the primary key for a person. Um, if you look at, um, say, items in a warehouse, it's going to have a barcode. Uh, usually that's an ID of an item. And so you're able to basically find out what things go there. Um, so uh, I am looking at his spreadsheet because I don't know what his, the names of his columns are. Um, and I'm going to just copy and paste these in here into this table. So this, this sheet one is just our menu. This is just our simple menu. Um, it's going to be this right here, this simple menu right here. We have profile, team directory, and resources. Um, is going to be or I can leave that here. Is going to be uh, this table. So, uh, like I said, I almost always uh, try to bold them, try to uh, move down my frozen row, um, so that I can clearly see um, what column names I'm working with, um, and then now we can have some data. So. Uh, these, these types of things are going to be, you know, we have our primary key. These are all going to be specific to our data source. Um, and so we can just kind of enter in things. Um, on his, we, we have like my profile. We have the join the team. Um, you know, these can be whatever you want them to be. Uh, and we have our descriptions. And then our images, um, if you're not sure the best way to do an image, uh, typically, I've actually found that 
uh, just using AppSheet to generate the link for you is typically best practice. And so a lot of times I will leave the image column blank um, and I will upload them directly from AppSheet. Um, now that does, that does force you to download things from Google Drive if that's where you have those images located. You have to download them to your computer and then upload them into AppSheet from that computer. Uh, but uh, a lot of times that is the easiest and fastest way to do it. Um, unless you have a very simple naming convention uh, and then you're able to just uh, copy paste. Like if you have 500 rows you're doing, obviously mm -hmm. you don't want to do those one at a time. So right. uh, I do recommend having a nice naming convention for those images. Uh, but I'm just going to copy paste the rest of this data like so. Um, and as you can see, we already have these two images in here. Uh, AppSheet will take um, the folder that this column is linked to um, in AppSheet, and then it will give it a unique ID, uh, which in this case is going to be this, followed by image, which is an image type, and then a unique ID for that image individually. Uh, which you guys can't see. These were the these were the keys uh, that we had already. Um, now, if you haven't already used it, I know that we've talked about it. Uh, if you haven't already used this expression or this formula, I should say, uh, this is in fact a uh, Google Sheet and Excel formula. Mm -hmm. uh, this des to hex. And then it takes a random between these, these things, and then it has eight digits. Uh, so this is essentially the same thing um, as having a unique ID expression in AppSheet. These two things are basically equivalent. Um, and so you can copy and uh, paste that in there. Uh, but one thing that is very important to note um, when you are doing this is you don't want to leave, you'll notice that this still has the formula and this has uh, just that unique ID. You do want to make sure that you do copy and paste the values only for these things. Uh, so you can do that using control C um, and then paste special is going to be control shift V or you can just click this. Um, so however you want to do it, um, but that will uh, remove that formula for you. Otherwise, if there is a spreadsheet formula, anytime the spreadsheet is updated, it is going to change that unique ID, uh, which you do not want, uh, especially if it is being used as a forward key in other tables. Um, so pretty, pretty basic stuff uh, so far. Um, another uh, thing that I really like to do. Yeah, what's up? Uh, we had a question come through about what is the best naming convention. Um, maybe talk about naming conventions for the header columns and mm -hmm. uh, what you mm -hmm. recommend for that. Um, so in terms of naming things, uh, basically for me, if it's ever a foreign key or a primary key, I almost always have ID somewhere in the column. Um, I think that that just is helpful. Uh, especially in when you're doing things later, um, trying to remember what things could need to be connected to what. Uh, nice mug, by the way. Thank you. Batman Man, I mug. need to. I need to. I've got my Superman mug in the other room. I would run out oh. and go get it, but. Man, you know, it could be the Justice League. That's probably unprofessional. Uh, yeah. Helping people <laughs> save time. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> That should be our new mascot for technologies. Is some, some heroes don't wear capes. We just make apps. Oh, but we're gonna also going to wear capes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, like I said, I, I, uh, your primary and foreign key columns should almost always have ID in them. Uh, if you are using a SQL database of some kind, I recommend not using spaces or capitalizing your column headers. Um, so all of these are technically incorrect. For Sorry, Austin. Man. For for SQL, uh, it just makes uh, things easier for you in the long run. Okay. Um, and that's so this know. this view link here would, uh -huh. oops, that's capitalized. Uh, would look something like this. Um, <clears throat> nice. This this will help you with 
uh, in your, your SQL expressions, but it's okay. not necessary. For um, Google Sheets, yeah. I mean, it's not necessary for SQL either, realistically. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, it it's is, just, it's just very helpful. It's just something that uh, is best, best practice. practice. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the other things, uh, your naming conventions can be whatever you want them to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously we have name, description, image. These, these, these column headers can be, can be anything you want. Uh, it's, it's, it's really just what makes sense the most? What things can I put in this column header that's going to allow me to understand uh, what they are and without having to go back and look at my spreadsheet? Um, so uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, I was told a new best practice that I've heard before, but I forgot about. Um, whenever you are doing tables, uh, you want to make sure that they're singular and not plural. Uh, so um, if you if you can do that, great. So let's say we have a table called graphs. Uh, this is technically not best practice. Um, best practice would be to have this as singular. Mm -hmm. uh, and Austin's actually the one who told me that. If you want to explain, uh, get you get you kicked in here. Uh, <laughs> explain the why. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually just um, I think I was watching a YouTube video and one of the guys was explaining about designing databases for apps. Um, and he was just suggesting that, um, the singular naming convention is best practice when designing, um, an apps database structure, because it's, it's an object or a, what app sheet calls an entity. So this is our menu entity and every record in this um, database is a um, description of the, the menu. So each record in each cell has a fact about this specific entity of a menu. And so like we can see the name um, header denotes that to the user that you need to write the name for this specific record. So the first or the second row Row two says um, ID and has a unique ID and then name is my profile. And so that will be uh, what that specific record's called. And the description is you need to update your profile or update profile. And then the view link is where users will navigate. And so they know I need to navigate or I need to write what the view name that users will navigate to. And then like thinking long, long term. Um, if you're naming your records already, then when you go to create your My Profile view, you already know um, what to name that view in AppSheet because you've already named it here with your view link column. And then show if user is in directory is true. And so that means that this view, the My Profile view, will only show if that user's profile has been created. And then join the team will only show if they don't have a profile yet. So that's kind of what that column is indicating. Uh, another thing that you'll kind of, you might be able to see, it might not be. Um, uh, I personally, this is something that I teach in my boot camps. Um, yeah. I like to color code my columns. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessary, obviously. I mean, realistically, a lot of this stuff is not going to be necessary. It's just something that um, for me has helped me in, the past, whenever I was first starting to build apps and stuff, mm -hmm. um, is color coding these columns. So my primary key, I designate a certain color. Um, usually I'll do like this bright yellow um, so that it's very clear that this is the primary key. And I'll have, I'll have this bright yellow on all of my tables. Um, so I do that a lot of times for my development contracts because um, once the app is finished being built, I want the... Uh, person who hired me to be able to look at that data and be able to make sense of it. Um, and a lot of things should be so explanatory. Like I said, I like to always have the ID in the first, the primary key in the first column, not necessary, but something that I like to do. Um, some of my apps, we have them in the last column because <laughs> uh, we built them last and we didn't want to mess with the, um, <clears throat> the uh, structure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's something I like to do. And then 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually have certain colors for certain tables. If there's a pre if there's a foreign key from that table, um, I can. So like, well, Grab won't have one. Let's let's finish banging this and then I'll show you. Uh, so next we have the department. We probably want uh, to switch it the graph table back to menu. That's probably a good idea. How about Manu? <laughs> Manu is probably pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste his data over. As you can see, we still have uh, that ID. Some people like to move this over as well, but for me, that's not very helpful um, because this basically means nothing to me. Um, what you could do is you could actually um, hide this ID column um, and then you could freeze it on maybe the name. Uh, but for me, the ID means nothing. And so mm. typically but I usually okay. freeze that. Yeah. Um, so as you see here, we have departments uh, or department as our table name. Uh, so this is going to be where people reside in a certain company. So we have sales, marketing, developers, and then we have their phone numbers. Uh, looks like Austin had one in between here, 68, 68 and 70, and then deleted it maybe. Maybe I did. You'll <laughs> never know. I'll never know. That's right. <laughs> uh, so again, we will uh, fill this in with this bright yellow. Uh, still no foreign keys uh, in here. Uh, next, we are going to have our team table, not teams. Right. Um, so I can copy and paste these over. Uh, and it looks like Austin already did one of these for us. Uh, but this is our user table. Um, even though it is called Teams, this is our, our team. This is our user table. So we, we are using the primary key of email. Uh, this is not necessary uh, by any means, uh, but it is something that we recommend. Um, a lot of times uh, you are going to be referencing the user table and you're going to be pulling, uh, trying to pull an email address for an automation, for um, a behavior, et cetera. Uh, and this, this can make things a lot easier, especially if you're all in the same domain, you can have um, some concatenate expressions that pull first name and the rest of the domain, um, et cetera. So, so we definitely recommend uh, using the email as the primary key. Yeah. And so we'll I think that. one common use case for that, I heard um, in an app sheet webinar that they were saying a lot of people have uh, written app scripts to pull the domain. Did you just say that or? Um... Uh, I did not say that, okay. but yeah. that was essentially what I was uh, uh, moving towards. To. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, so essentially with that email as primary column, your primary key, you're gonna be able to uh, do a lot more things using solely the primary key of this table, uh, which is pretty nice. Make sure expressions, your scripts, et cetera, much more simple. Uh, and as we like to say here, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I said that to Austin like 14 times this morning. So yeah. that's the context. Uh, for this sale, we are going to use department. We're going to have this nice pink color-ish, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, I like to actually change the color here as well. Um, not completely necessary, uh, but I think that it can it can help sometimes. Yeah. Um, I don't like to use a super bright one because man, it is yeah, bright. it's a little bit way too bright. So uh, we'll just know that department goes with this reddish yeah. pink hue. Um, That's a, as you can uh, see here, we also do have these thumbnails in here. Um, oh yeah. Like I said, this is an image column essentially. It, uh, <clears throat> it's a text it, icon expression. Correct. Yeah. Um, and so. This is something that you're going to want to do in AppSheet, obviously, uh, but pretty cool stuff there. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, this one here uh, should just pull the first and last name, just their first letter, and just put it into a circular icon. Yeah, uh, you can see the equals. It has their first and last name right there. There you have it. Boom, yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, um, Jeremy made a cool point. Yeah, about... this one right here. So this JT, this is this is that text icon expression. Yeah. Uh, right here, text icon. 
concatenate left first name, left last name. Uh, so there's some pretty cool things. You can technically do it with a full name if you wanted to, but it looks way worse. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one looks more like a phone. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, Jeremy, goodness, we have so many comments. Yeah, Jeremy made a cool comment about his app script um, using um, to post notifications to Google Chat. I was actually talking to um, Cameron, one of the other developers here, about um, using a Zapier webhook and then having a notifications table to um, kind of assign those notifications. Um, and so I'm definitely interested in figuring out how to do that too, Jeremy. So that's cool that you've got an app script already working. To, yeah, that's awesome. To do that. Uh, I think I did see another comment on here. I don't remember how long ago it was, so I apologize. I totally forgot about it. No worries. Uh, there was some kind of payment gateway Hmm. comment uh i don't i don't know where it is but oh, i see it i see it right uh, there i would like to know if with app sheet can we integrate a payment gateway uh who's that comment from from octavio i think that's how you pronounce their name my main man octavio okay cool uh so octavio if you're still here uh essentially you would you this is possible uh you would have to use a um some kind of app script uh in the back end of your sheet um or a webhook to trigger uh said payment gateway to occur um such as quickbooks Etc. Something like that. Uh, we we have integrated that in some of our apps, um, and so uh, yes, it is definitely possible. Um, nice. Clark, have you ever tried hosting the images on a Google site? Uh, yeah. So actually, a lot of the images that we have for for crew are actually in a Bitbucket, um, so we we do utilize that pretty often. Um, for a lot of the people that are watching this uh i figure that they um don't have access to a lot of the stuff that i have thankfully that i work at a tech company um and so um you know a lot of things will apply um <clears throat> not to me <laughs> uh let's see Thank you, Jeremy, for that upload image feature example. Uh, Zapier cost structure, but App Script is part of my enterprise workspace account. Yeah. Yeah. She have a private project. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Dude, Jeremy's, Jeremy's on top of this, man. He's got it, dude. You said Jeremy just signed up for a tech talk or he's already been in one? Yeah, he was, he was in one um, and it was a fun tech talk. He was talking about his apps and what he's working on. I want to get back with you, Jeremy, and uh, see the apps that you've made. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to touch base with you in a while, but I will be reaching out and seeing if we can connect. Um, yeah, honestly, that's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, cool. So sorry, let me finish this up. One more table. Uh, this app is, is decently simple. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's not too many tables to do. Yeah. Uh, we do have that primary key here again. I try to make these apps fairly simple in design. That way we can kind of see um, just the introduction. And then, Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, and then we can build <laughs> off of it, make it more complicated. Or you guys, I something that has been really cool is you guys will take these apps and start designing your own business processes with them. I love hearing those stories. So if you yeah, that's so have cool. those stories um, and you're using these apps, I really like hearing that because I, I do spend a lot of time making these apps and it's cool to see them in action and how you guys are using them. Yeah, it's awesome showing Austin that he's not a Jerry all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if you, and I haven't talked to Austin about this, so apologies. Uh, no but if you have a cool feature that you've built out that you're super proud of, you should send it our way. Yeah. Like send it our way. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a possibility that we'll show that feature in our webinars. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll shout you out. And we'll, you know, 
I love having cool, fun features be yeah. broadcasted. Yeah. Um, it's just sh- sh- there's no limit to AppSheet in terms of functionality, um, and you know, as advanced as you want to go. So, uh, yeah. I think it's I think it's really really fun and educational <laughs> for everybody to to get to see those things in action. Yeah. Um, then we have, so like same thing here, we have our image column. These were generated by AppSheet, it looks like. Um, and then we have these URLs here. Uh, so pretty, pretty cool stuff uh, there. Did you uh, create these just copy pasting or what did you do for these? Um, yeah, I just went to the URL and copied it into the, um, actually I did it in, in the app. So once the app was made, I- right. Yeah. Yeah. created each of those records i figured so because this yeah. and then um, also the yeah you can see the unique ids of the ones that are like capitalized i think is the google sheets formula and then the other ones are the regular this, formula or are, oh. are the unique id i think are you saying uh, that if it's capitalized it's from it that's what it usually seems like because like if you go back yeah i think you're right actually yeah so and then it you but created I, these records um using the excel formula mm-hmm. and then this last record was created just straight through app sheet so yeah it was uncapitalized yeah. interesting i actually didn't know that uh you stumped me good this time <laughs> uh so most of these principles will still apply um, if you are using a SQL database. Um, in fact, uh, I think basically all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty useful information right there. Uh, uh, but uh, so, yeah, that should be, um, what's up? How do you create relationships between two different tables? Um, and what would be the purpose of that? And how do you how do you determine as a developer that I need to create a relationship between these two tables? That's a great question, Austin. Uh, and it's actually funny you mentioned it because Austin asked me, uh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm throwing good. out all your dirty yeah. laundry. But he was basically <laughs> like, hey, I need, a, I need a foreign reference. I need yeah. a key, I need a foreign key. Uh, I'm not really sure where I should pull this from. Uh, at the time we only had uh, these three tables, menu, team, and resource. And yeah. so uh, I was looking at these and I was like, dude, none of these are good uh, yeah. for yeah. attributing a foreign key uh, from. And so I was like, you need to have a, another table, uh, something else that kind of ties things together. And so we did come up with this department. Um, but essentially when I, when I think of foreign keys, uh, I like to think parent-child relationship. I feel like that's the most basic way uh, to understand it. Um, without a parent, the child ceases to exist in my head. Um, yeah. And so what, what kinds of things uh, would um, cause those relationships uh, to happen? So for instance, you might have uh, a company table and then you might have a client table, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so in your client table, they would be attributed to a company. Um, of some sort. Uh, so, you know, having those references like that um, is very, very useful. Uh, your parent key is always going to be a part of, or it's always going to be a foreign key inside of your child uh, right. record. Um, so in this you example, do it the other way, it's yeah. messed up. Yeah. So in this example, which one would be the parent and which one would be the child? And in, in this specific one? Yeah. Yeah, so our department is going to be our uh, parent. Um, it's basically what houses uh, our team, right? Yeah. So our team of Austin Skidmore, 4464, that department is marketing, which is true. He is the director of marketing. <laughs> uh, so great job tried being... To, uh, tried to make it practical. Yeah, you made it, you made it practical. Uh, me and Justin are five B as well as Cameron, uh, which is developers. Cool. I made it, mom. You made We're it, developer. <laughs> uh, so uh, essentially, you have your department as that parent. It houses your 
children, so to speak, uh, yeah. being that team. Uh, yeah. So, and there's no limit to the amount of foreign relations or uh, relationships you can have between tables. Uh, it does, uh, especially in Google Sheets, once you hit, uh, I don't want to say for, for foreign ref- for, for uh, references and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, I've seen slowdowns at about 20,000 rows. Uh, so I would be careful on how many of these you put in there uh, because it is, it is running a formula every single time that ref rows expression that you may have, may not have seen uh, that actually generates on the virtual column. And um, so uh, I would be careful on how many you do have, um, but usually it's, it's not enough, especially most of my clients, it's not enough to where uh, you see a decrease in performance. There's a couple, um, but typically whenever you do see that t- decrease in performance, we do see a migration over to uh, SQL or GCP, et cetera. Um, so do we want to see what it looks like when we connect it to AppSheet? And then we can, um, so next week, if y'all come back, we'll go into like, um, we'll go into the uh, expression editor, set up some expressions here. Uh, so as always, whenever you um, <clears throat> are creating an app from scratch, it will only add the first table. So you do need to make sure you manually go in and add those. Um, now we can take a look at our column structures. Uh, these shouldn't matter too, too much. Image URL, long text. Ooh, we'll make that title our label as well as our image. Looks good. And then department ID, this is going to be a ref to our department table. Um, also, um, Another question I had in one of my tech talks was what is the is a part of um, checkbox mean? Uh, is a part of is essentially a, it happens whenever you do have a relationship. Uh, so for instance, I can have this department ID, this is a ref type, mm-hmm. um, and I can make this an is a part of. And what that does is it does two things. Number one, if you are, adding or editing a department, yeah. you are able to add members to that department from the same form, uh, which I don't have a view for. Let's create a view. Cool. Uh, definitely not a chart view. Not sure what that's the first one it chose to give us. <laughs> I don't think that's do ever that. happened. I've yeah. seen map views all the time. I've seen card views all the time. I don't think I've ever had it populate a yeah. chart view. Yeah. Um, but if we create a um, or if we edit this department, you'll notice this down here, team entries that reference this entry in the department ID column. Uh, that's a lot of words, uh, which probably make your brain feel stupid. <laughs> yeah, what uh, But what that is, is that's yeah. this related team's virtual column, mm. right? Uh, and so you'll, you'll see this as a description. Uh, if I take this out, oh, wow. I save this. I did not even realize that that's was written from somewhere that's pretty cool learn something new every day i did that's pretty cool <laughs> uh so i almost always change those because i think it's yeah just horrible. it's like a lot of words mm-hmm. uh and actually this is not users in this department this is a better title nice um best practice is to actually put double quotes around that but i'm running a long time so yeah. Um, and then now we can actually add a brand new user to this. Um, it does need to be a brand new one though. Uh, so yeah. uh, usually you don't see users uh, yeah. being a part of something else. Um, usually users are a table of their own. Yeah. Uh, but if like, let's say if you had purchases, if you had those many to um, yeah. that is going to be something that you could do. Um, so uh, once you once you create one, let's create one really quick. Uh, let's do Ben at Grease Dot Solutions. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we'll have a first name, Ben Anderson. I almost forgot his name. <laughs> uh, and let's make up a phone number for him. That's almost always the phone number I use for test data. 
<laughs> Shout out to uh, everybody who knows what that's a reference to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll uh, Jerry. This is roll. <laughs> no. <laughs> and let's turn email updates on. If we ever deploy this app, I want him to get spammed. Uh, and then this department at the bottom, you'll notice it's already sales because this is a part of uh, that other one. Oh, our thumbnail is required. Uh, what did I do? I think I just clicked back a bunch of times on my mouse. That's all right. That's a sad day. Uh, cool. You get the idea. What, yeah. One thing that's really nice about this is a part of is that you're able to add as many as you want. Uh, so my favorite use for is a part of is actually photos. Um, oh. That's that's by far the one that I use the most uh, in terms of is a part of. Um, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to have multiple photos for one record. Most yeah. of the stuff that I work me personally, most of my clients do inspection apps. Uh, and so you have an inspection, you know, if you wanted to not do as a part of, you'd have to have a column for your image, for your title, for your description, notes, whatever, uh, for that image. So, you know, you, let's say you have 10 pictures that you want to add every, like every time that's 30 extra columns. That is a nightmare in terms of database management. Um, whereas if you have a, um, is a part of table, you would create another table, you'd have ID, picture title, image, and description, and all of those things are in a different table. And so right. then you can add as many columns as you, or as many pictures as you want, um, and they're all going to be populated on templates, et cetera, um, because it is related. Nice. So that is something that I uh, do all the time. I make your brain go stupid. <laughs> I don't remember saying that, but yeah. I don't doubt that I did. Uh. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I stole the screen back from you, Clark. Um, oh, because, all yours, brother. Yeah. Um, I didn't we, have anything else important to say anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, I liked how much we were able to spend on just like learning a, a little bit of the nuances of designing a database and um, seeing what what best practices are from, from you. Um, cause you're, you're the expert developer and you know, kind of what has worked and you've got the experience of seeing what, what things work well and what things don't. So it was really insightful. I really enjoyed it. You're welcome, um, Austin. Thank you. <laughs> if you guys liked it, make sure to like, and subscribe. Um, <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, we kind of did live Q and a throughout. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and move us. Last forward. question. Last question. Uh, Bradley okay. said, can we upload photos taken from Google photos? Uh, if you're saying, can you uh, upload an image that's already been taken from a camera that you've already, you've already taken the picture. Yes, you can. Uh, whenever you click that button to. Uh, Did you want your screen back? Nope. Okay. Uh, whenever you um, <clears throat> click the thing that says like before it had thumbnail and it had that little picture icon where you could add one. Uh, if you're on your phone or on a tablet, it will ask if you want to use your camera or your uh, gallery. So that is where you would do that. Um, if you're saying, if you're asking if you want to take it straight from Google photos, uh, I actually have not done that, but I'm sure there's a way that you could uh, manipulate that. Nice. Um, and then Jeremy just commented that um, he doesn't have to have 30 columns to upload um, different images. So I think you, you just blew his <laughs> mind with that is a part of right there, dude. That's pretty cool. So yeah. That's, that's awesome. Sweet. Um, well, let's keep moving. Um, whoop, I went backwards. <laughs> All right. So for our review, um, we looked at how to create a use case guide. We defined our entities to make sure that the app is organized the best way possible for the, sp the specific requirements um, for the onboarding um, use case. And then we created that structured database and Clark went through kind of the why behind we named things a certain way, how to structure it, how to create those primary keys and foreign keys. Um, and I will say, I would really encourage you guys to go to appsutraining.com to get signed up for the professional subscription because there's a course in there called um, AppSheet Essentials Bootcamp that goes in depth to all of these best practices. 
So if you're wanting even more information about how to create these data relationships, normalize your data, structure data, this is one of my favorite topics in AppSheet development um, and, and app development in general. You will have all the resources that you could ever want and more in that um, AppSheet Essentials Bootcamp. So I really encourage you guys to go over there and there's still time before the, um, uh, the grand prize giveaway. So make sure you're signed up so you can get entered into that list and we'll do the giveaway here shortly. So like I've said um, throughout this webinar, you're gonna get, um, when you sign up for that professional subscription, you, there's expert instructors on this, on our AppSheet training website. There's on-demand content. So best practices for AppSheet development whenever and whenever you need it. And then you can get access to those certifications. So you're gonna be able to display your AppSheet knowledge for um, potential jobs or to get promotions in your current role um, and to display that on LinkedIn or other professional websites and um, resumes. So that's what's included in your AppSheet training account. So I'm just gonna go ahead and head back over here to appsheettraining.com to show you guys one more time. Um, all you have to do is click purchase now. Again, it's free to sign up. So as long as you signed up um, before this time, um, then you get free access to all these trainings. And so um, just to give you guys an in-depth view of what trainings are offered, our full course library right here, um, this course right here, AppSheet Essentials Bootcamp is awesome. This is one of my favorite boot camps that we have. And next month is Expression Mastery, which is also really great. Um, so this one kind of gives you those foundational, fundamental um, concepts that you need to know. So relational data, user experience, um, expressions, and going all the way down to deploying your app. So the thing I really like about um, this course and the new LMS that we have is it not only has a um, great content and videos, but you have labs. So um, if you've wanted to be a part of our live boot camps in the past and haven't been able to, this is our live boot camp in an on-demand format. So you can watch all the recordings, the videos, and get access to all these labs, everything that you need to get up to speed on developing an app sheet. Just sign in and subscribe right there or click that purchase now um, to get subscribed to appsheettraining.com, right? And you get that free access for 30 days and get access to all this content. There's uh, PDF materials in there. So best practices on how to build. Yeah. Um, and they've really taken the time, Deanna and all the team of developers here. So you're learning from AppSheet experts, right? These are um, people who are developing apps for clients around the world, around the country, and um, worked on, you know, refining their skills and what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. So this is definitely high quality content. And it's going to give you an immersive learning experience um, when you start going into these courses and really wanting to know more about building on AppSheet. So we were able to, in the time we had, to kind of show you guys um, a high-level view of what database design is. But if you want an in-depth and an immersive learning experience, definitely want to get access to those, this training website here. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Um, for joining our webinar today, and we'll see you next week. Bye.